March 7th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Luke chapter 22 from the New Testament. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is called the Passover, was approaching. The chief priests and the experts in the law were trying to find some way to execute Jesus, for they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered Judas, the one called Iscariot, who was one of the twelve. He went away and discussed with the chief priest and officers of the temple guard how he might betray Jesus, handing him over to them. They were delighted and arranged to give him money. So Judas agreed and began to look for an opportunity to betray Jesus when no crowd was present. Then the day for the Feast of Unleavened Bread came, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us to eat. They said to him, Where do you want us to prepare it? He said to them, Listen, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house that he enters, and tell the owner of the house. The teacher says to you, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large furnished room upstairs. Make preparations there. So they went and found things just as he told them, and they prepared the Passover. Now when the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table, and the apostles joined him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves, for I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But look, the hand of the one who betrays me is with me on the table. For the Son of Man is to go, just as it has been determined. But woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. So they began to question one another as to which of them it could possibly be who would do this. A dispute also started among them over which of them was to be regarded as the greatest. So Jesus said to them, The king of the Gentiles lorded over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. Not so with you. Instead, the one who is greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is seated at the table, or the one who serves? Is it not the one who is seated at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are the ones who have remained with me in my trials. Thus I grant you a kingdom, just as my Father granted to me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, pay attention. Satan has demanded to have you all to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. When you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. But Peter said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Jesus replied, I tell you, Peter, the rooster will not crow today until you have denied three times that you know me. Then Jesus said to them, When I sent you out with no money bag or traveler's bag or sandals, you didn't lack anything, did you? They replied, Nothing. He said to them, But now the one who has a money bag must take it, and likewise a traveler's bag too, and the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you that the scripture must be fulfilled in me, and he was counted with the transgressors, for what is written about me is being fulfilled. So they said, Look, Lord, here are two swords. Then he told them, It is enough. Then Jesus went out and made his way, as he customarily did, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. He went away from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. 
Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And in his anguish he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, exhausted from grief. So he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you will not fall into temptation. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd appeared, and the man named Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He walked up to Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? When those who were around him saw what was to happen, they said, Lord, should we use our swords? Then one of them struck the high priest's slave, cutting off his right ear. But Jesus said, Enough of this. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple guard, and the elders who had come out to get him, Have you come out with swords and clubs like you would against an outlaw? Day after day, when I was with you in the temple courts, you did not arrest me. But this is your hour, and that of the power of darkness. Then they arrested Jesus, led him away, and brought him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had made a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat down among them. Then a slave girl, seeing him as he sat in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man was with him too. But Peter denied it. Woman, I don't know him. Then a little later, someone else saw him and said, You are one of them too. But Peter said, Man, I am not. And after about an hour, still another insisted, Certainly this man was with him, because he too is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I don't know what you're talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, a rooster crowed. Then the Lord turned and looked straight at Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before a rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus under guard began to mock him and beat him. They blindfolded him and asked him repeatedly, Prophecy, who hit you? They also said many other things against him, reviling him. When day came, the council of the elders of the people gathered together, both the chief priest and the experts in the law. Then they led Jesus away to their council and said, If you are the Christ, tell us. But he said to them, If I tell you, you will not believe, and if I ask you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. So they all said, Are you the Son of God then? He answered them, You say that I am. Then they said, Why do we need further testimony? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. God, it's fascinating to me that towards the beginning of this chapter, it talks about preparing for the day, for the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And on that day, they took a unblemished, innocent, pure white lamb and shed its blood in the temple for the sacrifice for the Passover dinner. And then we see in verse 7, it says, Then the day for the Feast of Unleavened Bread came, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. And as we go into the Passover dinner with Jesus and his disciples, we see him pick up a cup of wine to remind them that this cup is poured out for them, the new covenant in his blood, the replacement lamb, the perfect sacrifice. No more would the temples be filled with lambs that had to be sacrificed and priests to go through and rituals and processes. That your son, your perfect, unblemished son, was going to be the ultimate sacrifice from that Passover dinner. 
And you could tell that the disciples didn't really understand what was going on. You can tell by their conversation at the dinner table. You can tell by the fact, well, there wasn't really a table table, but you could tell <laughs> that Judas wasn't all that scared because he still betrayed Jesus later on that night. They argued over who was greatest. Their king, their sacrifice for all their sins, for eternity, was about to go to an excruciating death for them. And they were arguing over who was the best. God, I think about that night and wonder if any of us would have done anything different. Would we have known how important that night was? How important that dinner was? How important that man at the table was to us? Do we today? I don't know. I think, I think we're all like Simon or Peter. Where we betray Jesus multiple times every day. I see it all the time. I see people who act one way in church and a different way during the week. I see them act one way in a Facebook group about Christians and another in a selling group for eBayers. Deny, 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 deny. I can't even imagine what it must feel like when Peter looked up the rooster is crowing outside. He has all these people around him accusing him. He's feeling backed up into a corner and he looks up and his eyes lock on Jesus. Because Jesus is looking at him. I can't even imagine what Peter must have felt at that moment. Sheer devastation. The entire weight of what he had actually just done crashing in on him. But do we ever get that we do that to you, Lord? Time after time after time, denying you to friends because we fear what they're going to say. Denying you to people we date because we're not sure what they feel like and whether they have a relationship with you. Denying you to our family because our family's already been really clear that they don't want to hear one more thing about you. So we kind of pussyfoot around those conversations. Denying you to people out in the public who don't even know us. Because our behavior betrays us as not really being Christians. Not really followers of you. How could we be followers of you and act that way out in public? God, I don't want your son's ultimate sacrifice to be for nothing. And yet sometimes in my heart it feels like it's for nothing because we don't truly understand what you gave up, your only son, and the death he went through for us. I don't know if we will ever get it. I suspect until our eyes lock on Jesus when he comes back again. We won't truly understand until that moment. Just like Simon Peter got that day. Of fully understanding what had just happened. What he had just done. God, I would like to think that we would get it sooner than that. We affect so many people by our actions, by our statements. God, how many people are we keeping from you because of our own fear? Because of our own choices to deny you because of fear of what other people will think of us or how they'll look at us or what they'll say to other people about us. It's interesting because Passover is actually not too far away because it's early this year. And so the story that has been running through the Gospels that we've been going through over and over and over again of this ultimate sacrifice 
and how all of these people played pieces in ultimately what was going to happen. But throughout it all, Jesus knew. He knew at the dinner what was going to happen. He knew when they went into the gardens what was going to happen. And even when that anxiety level hit a high note for him and he reached out to you, instead of abandoning us, he just prayed more earnestly to you and you strengthened him. God, I guess that's what we need. We need to ask you for strength. We need to not fear your man, fear what they think of us, what they're going to say to us, how they're going to react to us. We just need your strength and we need to understand that it doesn't matter what anybody says. It only matters what you say to us, with us, for us, against us. I don't want my heart to sink when my eyes lock on Jesus when he comes back again. I want to be able to open my arms and run to him. Because he has forgiven all of my sins. Even the sins of denying him. So God, I, I'm sorry that we don't completely get everything that has happened for us. Everything that you've done for us. We don't get how big your love is for us. But at least today, give us enough strength today to not deny you. To not deny you to the people who need to hear about you and from you. God, help us find that strength so that your sacrificial lamb and the story of all that your son did for us can be told to the entire world. Thank you. Thank you for more than what I know I need to thank you for. In your son's name we pray. Amen.